Oh my gosh, I'm really good actually. I had a wonderful sleep and um, yeah, I've, I've woken up with the joys of spring, summer, whatever it is. I've just woken up with that joy in my heart. Which is you look resplendent as ever. Oh, so do you, thank you. Oh, <laughs> we were just thinking about us meeting and my first kind of workings with you is your work. I mean, you were so fantastic in uh, what you do. And we did the woman who refused to dance at, right. at the tete a -tete festival. Yes. Bill yes. Banks Jones. Bill, dear he, Bill. Yeah. yeah, he's Anna. incredible, isn't he? He's one of these people that incredible. really encourages the art. Yes, he really does. Yeah, and uh, he allows people to do this flying. Yes, very generous spirit. Yeah, into the unknown. You don't know what's going to be at the other end of it, but he's like, I'm going to be with you. With you. Yeah, he's with you. He's yeah, exactly. And yeah, I know yeah. that he's a, very much a great fan of your work, Shirley. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank as he you. said to me. And it's it's really lovely in your work because I'm, your work, which we'll talk about later, includes film, it includes dance. And I used to, I've got 60 medals for, for dancing, you know. I Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I think dance, dancing and singing to me, at the core of human existence. I mean, that <laughs> I really do. I think it's really critical. Yeah, it, it does. It makes you feel so alive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember from the age of four or five, I mean, my parents used to take us to parties the whole time. Yeah. Um, exactly. House parties. <laughs> you know, we used to dress up in our party frocks at four or five years old. I've still got the photos. And that's what I remember. That's when I started my life, you know, singing and dancing. Well, dancing. <laughs> All right, we're going to start. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody, wherever you are. It is, I am Nadine Benjamin, and I am the intuitive Verdi Soprano. I am a certified NLP mind coach, a certified high performance coach, a healer, and I am a professional opera singer. And I love singing all over the world, operas of Verdi, Puccini, you name it, I love it. Oh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I love, 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 love celebrating, connecting and championing people. And this morning we have, I just want to champion the wonderful Shirley J. Thompson, composer. The conceptual music of composer Shirley J. Thompson is performed and screened worldwide and often described as superb by Le Figaro, as well as powerful and striking by Planet Hugo. A visionary artist and cultural activist, Thompson has pushed the boundaries of classical music, composition and performance with groundbreaking productions that have attracted new audiences worldwide. Thompson is the first woman in Europe also to have composed and conducted a symphony within the last 40 years. And it is a pleasure to have her here with us. Thank you so much. As I always say, always, 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 always say, we are not doctors, medical doctors or psychiatrists. We're just here to provide a space for you to see something a little bit different and to just go a bit further in development and news and new ideas. If you do need somebody like a medical doctor, a psychiatrist or a psychotherapist, please, please, please reach out to someone or ask someone to help. Or if you know someone that you know needs help, pick up the phone to them. Really, really important. And without further ado, good morning, Susan. Good morning, Lena. Beautiful morning. Yes, very true, very true. Without, without further ado, let's go to Shirley. Wow. Yeah, good morning. Such an honour to be here this morning with you. Oh, I'm I think so... you're doing a brilliant job. I'm really enjoying your your series. Oh, thank you. I thank you. I, I, it's such an honour, and I love it. I completely love it. I yeah. mean, who knew? Who knew? Oh my god! I could see it, I could see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we would love to talk about you because you're the reason why we're here this morning. Oh, so, you. and I would just love to le learn, and I'm sure everybody uh, would love. Morning, Claire. Um, would love to know how you began and where you started. Yeah, well, it, I mean, as we were saying, for me, it goes right back to childhood. Um, there was always a lot of music in the house. It was a real range of music. Um, and culture, um, lots of really beautiful Jamaican food, lots of, um, my dad would play gospel music every Sunday, he would play Jamaican music every Sunday. Millie Small has just passed away, but um, my boy Lollipop, 
was a track that I can remember dancing to at the age of two or oh, yes, My mum used to play that. It used to go something like, my boy, Lali, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's how I remember music. I mean, that's the first track I remember in my, you know, that is the first track I remember. So, um, yeah, I grew up in a house full of music. We were always going to, to parties, house parties, weddings, christenings. So I can just remember this sort of entertainment, always getting dressed up to go out and do stuff. Yeah. And that's how I remember my childhood. And apart from that, we were always playing out in the garden. Yeah. Um, we had a little backyard and always out there having fun. So I just remember a really fun childhood. But what was significant is that um, next door, we used to play, next do play with friends next door, children next door. And um, they had a piano up in the attic, yeah. and the attic was about four stories up right at the top. Yeah. And goodness knows how I, as a four or five year old, three, four maybe, found myself in this attic. I mean, it was really decrepit attic, yeah. but I used to go up there and tink. They had a piano up there, and I used to spend hours tinkling, just making sounds on this piano. And I can, I can remember it now. I mean, it's like something out of a film. So, literally, crawling up into this attic. And there was just a piano in there. That's all I remember. It was dark. It was dank. It was dusty. Yeah. I found this piano, discovered it. It was like my little secret place. And I used to go and just make not make make music or whatever it was. It was magical. And that's all I remember is the magic. Oh, oh my gosh, that's such a magical opening. I love that. I so <laughs> love that. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Anthea. Anthea is saying, oh my God, I remember it. Well, she must be referring to my boy Lollipop. That's so oh, wonderful. Oh, that's yeah, beautiful. my boy Lollipop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're up in this attic. You're mm -hmm. tinkering on this piano yeah. in the attic. Yeah, as soon as I could get the chance, I just remember leaving my house which would have been around the corner to the neighbours and going up into finding the attic and spending hours up there and nobody missed me. That was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably didn't miss you because they could hear you. <laughs> well, I don't know. Nobody ever mentioned it, but yeah. um, that's where I spent my time. And my mother yeah. and father never said, oh, where were you? Or... Yeah. <laughs> so did your first compositions come out of that or how did that work? Um, I just fell in love with music, a sound. It was absolutely magical. And then I can remember I was about five years old and my mum and dad would get me, no, they hardly they didn't have very much money, but they always managed to get us these really lovely Christmas presents. And I remember they gave us a, she, they gave me a little tape recorder mm. and it played this bark lullaby. And I played it over and over and over and over and over. Um, so there, there were these particular tracks from the age of four or five that really ignited this magical, this thing that was really magical. I was hypnotized. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that's how my, my um, meeting, my relationship with music began at the age of four or five. Yeah. And with, you know, my father was always playing lots of music. We'd be all dancing on a Sunday all day, going to church and then coming back. And then we'd have gospel music on and reggae yeah. music and ska music and soul music. The house would be full of music. And my parents would also, my father would also whistle Tchaikovsky piano concertos because that's what he heard on the radio in Jamaica. Wow. And uh, my mother sang in a choir. Yeah. So, and really encouraged um, art in the house. So she set practice off to tap dancing, yeah. ballet, contemporary dance, the yeah. brownies. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of culture in my house. Yeah. So did you, so you, you ended up going, did you end up going to a conservatoire or how did that work for you? Um, well, I went down the academic route. Um, so I, I really loved a lot of subjects and I was particularly good at history. Yes. Um, so I took a lot of humanities at uh, school. Um, I was really good at sport. So at one point um, I was contacted by the, I don't know, the National Athletics Foundation or whatever it was to become a sprinter. Um, so um, at the age of 
12, 13, I was really taught. Well, I wasn't torn because my mother said, well, we're not having you running around the track like a horse. You need to. So that put paid to my athletics career, but um, I spent a lot of out time outdoors because yeah. I was really good at um, sport. So I no, I, I mean I love sport. So yeah. ball, tennis, um, track, yeah. track and field. I was always out there with with the team. Yeah. I was captain of the netball, captain of all the team because that I mean that was my love. I was never, yeah, yeah. I was never indoors. I was always um, outdoors yeah. um, training, yeah. uh, which is really put me in good stead for, you know, adult life because yeah. of the discipline yeah. in an athlete. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think that's really comparable to the discipline. You need to be a successful artist. You do yeah. need to be physically fit. Yes, and mentally. we are athletes, yeah, and yeah. mental agility as well. Agility, yeah. 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 yeah, so, I mean, you're a professor. Um, you do, like, you have three doctorates. <laughs> Oh my amazing. Amazing. and you work with scholars i mean in the arts how do you how, how exactly does that show up yeah well i work with say other artists fine artists uh sculptors ceramic artists yeah, yeah. um filmmakers as well as myself being a filmmaker um yeah. i'll work with filmmakers to create um new work that joins our thought process yeah. and our, our ideas our philosophies yeah. um and we we look at well quite often there we've we've had discussions and we've organically come together to put yeah. projects together yeah. so it, i and i i really enjoy that um yeah. coming from my background with with love with my love of film my love of the printed word literature yeah. history a lot yeah. of my projects are history based i do um really do think we learn from history yeah um i've fortunately been able to um link all of my loves together yeah and um in a way that i didn't know that i would we be able to do yeah. uh, but just thinking through and organically these things have happened i haven't tried to force them together yeah. um they've all happened organically which is the only way that art is artwork can be credible I think that's really interesting, actually, because I really believe about integration and finding what that integration point is for yourself. I mean, for me, it is about um, the mind. So I'm, you know, I'm neuroscience and, you know, coaching and singing. I mean, and, and like yourself, I love the word. I love poetry and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I try to put that in my work as, as, as much as I possibly yeah. can. And you're, um, brilliant. you're brilliant at it. Oh, well, thank you very much. You stuff on the spot. I've seen you create things, lines. You really get the intention of, of, of the music and the words together, and you'll create things on the spot. Oh, well, thank you. Well, it's, it's great when I've had you've you've given, and I think that's one of the also the other things about you and your work is that you are not about. Um, when people work with you or collaborate with you, you're not about like holding someone in a space and they can't move. You're about ex allowing them to express their own creativity. So you come up with something together. Absolutely. That is a freedom and a fluidity. And, that, and that's also the sign of the great artist and the great collaborator that you are, which is oh, thank you. And also a great sign of your, your, um, your confidence in your work. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And your comfortability mm -hmm. in your own skin about what you do, which is mm -hmm. fascinating. I love what Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, I have to say, I was really challenged on, on that early on. People would say, well, you don't care. You don't care about your work. And I thought, wow. Yeah, yeah, I was really challenged on it. And I had to really stand my ground and say, well, I really want you to take ownership of this part of what I'm doing because... Yeah. This, what I do is a draft and yeah. as performers and in the live space, that's when it really takes off. Yes. Um, but I think it's, um, I, I mean, I get a lot of that kind of resistance from people who've been trained in conservatoires because they're, they're so used to the rigidity of, um, you know, this line must be played in this very particular way, yeah. uh, which I think really is so restricting 
of the mind, body, everything is just totally restricting. Yeah, yeah. So you like to have that kind of freedom and in that investigative freedom. Absolutely. Anyway. I think that's how yeah. things flow and things need to happen on in the moment. The yeah. moment is now, not 500 years ago. It's The moment is now. What can we do in the now to make yeah. the thing the best as it can be? I mean, I work with brilliant artists such as yourself because I know that you can invest. Your investment, I mean, is priceless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why would I want to restrict that? I mean, I just want as much of it as I can get. So yeah. I can I stand right back because yeah. I don't want to interfere with that flow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've been, we're in Artist in Creation 6, and you've been working in your heroines in opera, and we wanted to talk to you today about creating and sustaining new projects in arts and culture. Could you kind of, like, give us a window into that? That would be wonderful. Yeah, so um, I started writing, consciously um, writing opera, um, oh, music, stage works. I mean, my background is I love musicals rko musicals on the town all that kind of stuff <laughs> lots of beautiful costumes and stage and dancing and yeah. really elaborate kind of theatrical stuff i mean that's my love that's what i grew up with yeah. um, i would always watch on tv or go to the theater when i could um really elaborate what i could consider to be really elaborate um theatrical stuff yeah so it was always always my dream to be able to create recreate that with my own stories to recreate those stories I'd grown up with yeah. um, on, on on another stage or, yeah. or, or television. So my base is really having um, Fred Astaire and <laughs> Rogers and, you know, that kind of beautiful 1940s, 30s, 40s, 50s um, um, aesthetic. Yeah, that's yeah. what, when I write music, when I put stuff on stage, that's my baseline. I'm always back to those days of the RKO musical or the RKO musical or the those musicals, yeah. with the, those beautiful storylines. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Very family orientated, very very moralistic, yeah. fun, witty. Um, that's where I, that's where I'm coming from with my base yeah. and with um, also um, the having a, a, a Jamaican coming from a Jamaican household as well as being somebody from brought up in well born and brought up in London so I'm very lucky that I have many cultural um pots to to draw on and that's all very organic yeah. um so when I started to get the opportunity or made the opportunity for myself to get things on stage and to think operatically uh, yeah. as um as I understand it and putting yeah. music song dance together the first production um, was a child of the jago uh, mm. which i produced for the south bank center which ran for a month at um south bank center um back in 1997 and um i cast for that i staged it i conducted it so yeah. it, it was quite a, a challenging thing for me to do but like yourself um, I just saw it was something that I needed to do yeah. and um, just went on. I had to raise the money and I and I put that on. So, that so, you, so you fundraised, you casted, you conducted, you um, created, you wrote. So you just, you did, <laughs> you did the whole. The whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I could hardly walk for a <laughs> weeks after having the first run. Um, completed but um when i look back that has really you know set the, the precedent or set, really set me up for what i've been doing ever since that time so um at that time i had my own orchestra my own ensemble so i was regularly at the south bank with my own program of my music uh which was sort of mixing my own contemporary classical music style with a bit of um world music with a bit of gospel um and arrangements of Bob Marley and stuff like that so I was doing that really from about 1990 yeah. um well actually 1985 was my yeah. first yeah. performance at in the Purcell room with, with my own music and yeah. on BC television mm. um so my 
opera, my heroines of opera series I started in 2006 yeah. um, started off with the commemoration of the act of the abolition of the trade in um, enslaved African mm. people mm. and of the transatlantic trade in enslaved African people. Mm. And um, I wanted to find a way of commemorating mm. what had happened um, in um, 1807, which was the year of the abolition of the act, which was the year of the act that abolished yeah. enslavement. And um, I had to do some research to find a way of commemorating this act. And I, I had been invited by parliament to commemorate yeah. um, this occasion with music yeah. in a, a big exhibition called People and Parliament. Yeah. So there was a huge exhibition at uh, Westminster Palace and yeah. I provided the music for it, yes. some, of, some of the music for it. Yeah. Um, so it was a huge occasion and I had to work out what I would do. So the year before, I um, worked out this idea of um, focusing on what you know, what was the uh, the women's role, what was their part in this, yeah. and I just specifically looked out for um, women that had been what I perceived as iconic. They had done something that really pushed the boundaries of what they could do, yeah. um, and considering the environment that they were living in, yes. um, it was for me, I stand on their shoulders of what they achieved and yeah, yeah, yeah. um, even survive um, that transatlantic um, trade mm. um, of your mind, body and spirit. Yeah. It, for me, it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, so in my research, I found um, um, Queen Nanny of the Maroons of Jamaica who had traveled from Ghana to Jamaica. Yeah. And she was one of the women that I, I, I focused on. Um, I discovered through the archives in Parliament that they had some artifacts um, from the trade in enslavement. One of these artifacts was a an illustrated um, political drawing by Isaac Crookshank of a woman um, who had been hung by Captain Kimber. Um, she had been beaten and hung because she didn't dance on his ship, yeah. um, Captain Kimber's ship. Yeah. Um, this would have been around, um, if that was 1807, at the end of the 17th, 16th century, well, 17th century, I'm getting all muddled up now. That's all right. <laughs> 1792, yeah, 1792, and then the illustration was, eight, the, the abolition was in 1807. Yeah, 1792 rings a bell. And yeah. um, I was totally, when I saw this painting, I was just, um, I, I, and I was struck to the ground. I mean, it was so devastating to mm. see that. And it, this was just one of the a little, one of the little th things that had happened and just imagining all of the things that must have happened to those people. Um, well, would have been my ancestors um, taken from West Africa or even Central Africa or wherever. Um, and that journey going across to the Caribbean or to Brazil, to to America, all the places that we landed. Mm. And um, I took this particular woman, um, the, the depiction of her, mm. and I transformed her into somebody who was very defiant and um, having her soul um, speak for her. So even though physically she was mm. taken out of this world, her soul remained defiant and her soul was saying, look, you might be able to take my body, but my soul and my spirit cannot be taken. Wow. And um, so that's how I made her into a heroine. Yeah. And that's how I found ways of creating heroines um, who may not overtly look like heroines, yeah. but in their way, they're, they're great heroines. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it, that um, the way we can use work to inspire others as well. I mean, I'm sure that when people see those works and they see you giving those qualities to those characters, it's a bit like now, isn't it, is, you know, we're in this situation of 
having to live, you know, quite confined, you know, how do we find mm. those moments that don't look overtly, this is my spirit, this is my strength, this is my, you know, but kind of putting that, that's showing true. that as a message in the work can also inspire other people. I think that's part of, that's really wonderful. Mm. Well, I've had so much feedback about that work. I mean, people ask me, to about that work all the time yeah. and i think i set up a number of kind of conventions with that in in the way that i was able to create a voice yeah. cre cre create a production that could be performed by a yeah. major artist like yourself where you sustain this character for an hour which yeah. is, you know that's it that itself was groundbreaking to yeah. be able to tell a story um, that could be sustained in opera, operatically in in that time period. I mean, for you to achieve that and the likes of Abigail Kelly yeah. is a real testimony to your artistry yeah. that you can sustain that character, uh, that characterization and the trauma of it. I mean, it, the, the characters are, you know, have lived through such trauma. And yeah, I've seen I mean, you that trauma. Mm. It's the way that you make the work speak and how you've created it. And so I, I suppose what I would love to know from you, Shelley, now is so this this, you know, you're you're very multitasked in how you can produce and you can write and you you can do all the qualities. What what about making your work now? I mean, how are you how are you being asked to deliver your work in these times uh, right now in terms of sustaining and creating and Mm, mm. Yes, well, I'm continuing my Heroines of Opera series and I'm putting together the next production. Mm. Um, the previous one was Women of the Windrush, yeah. which actually was able to incorporate a film I'd made about the Windrush and Women of the Windrush um, back in 1992. And, they, and now looking at how I can fuse dance with yeah. film and working with people like yourself who are so multi-talented that you're also a dancer. Yeah, and I do yeah. like the fact, I do like to work with artists that have this, um, that are multi-talented and can dance. Yeah. They can, they're, they're very physical um, yeah. and performative. They're able to perform really well. So as well yeah. as being able to sing, yeah. um, there is also the performance element, which to me is so important and goes right back down, to, back to my days of watching um, the musical RKO, where they yeah. perform. It's all about the performance. As one of you to sing and and dance, it is about the performance. And um, I think sometimes classical music staging, operatic staging, misses that idea of you know the performance, yeah. um, um, which I think the everyday person like myself loves to see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To but, but how are you being asked, like, how will people see your work now in the circumstances? I mean, are you looking at new ways for people to see the work? Yes, well, I'm putting a lot more of my work on YouTube, which I was in the process of doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now this is the main way that people are able to um, witness my work. So I'm being asked by companies to, who want to share the link with their own company yeah. um, to, yeah, put up my work um that's great and it's a good yeah. job i've got many many films i've filmed yeah. everything that i've done and yeah. i can actually put uh, my work on stage yeah. in people's living rooms or or wherever yeah. um so thank goodness for youtube and thank goodness yeah. for the media yeah. Which yeah. i'm glad that um i trained as a in television back at the bbc yeah. and i'm glad i have those skills that i learned um as well as writing, staging music. Um, I do come from that background of staging um, a, a film, film and television. Yeah. So I actually have two films with the British Film Institute that they distribute. Oh. So Anthea and Clara just saying, Anthea's just saying, I wish I had known you when I was young. I mm. always wanted to combine voice and dance, but no one did oh. that then. No. Just no. Saying, exactly, Anthea, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, the whole thing when I was at um, art school, I mean, my first degree, um, I thought, fortunately, I went to um, university rather than conservatoire. And I do say fortunately because I lived in my hall with architects, I lived with medical students, I lived with dentists, I lived with a zoologist, 
Yeah. Um, I met people from all disciplines. Yeah. And I think this really informs my work now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, my best friend is a pharmacologist. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, so I think what you're, what I, I mean, am I right in saying what I'm hearing you saying, or what I can hear is that creating and sustaining new projects is about using all the skills that we have, absolutely, integrating them to stay to stay as as present and as focused and as alive and as creative. Yeah, um, and innovative as possible. And innovative. Yeah, you got to keep innovating. You got to. Yeah. As I mean, I've seen so much innovation with yeah. within the state with yeah. about a week of lockdown. I saw so many people yeah. using um, the digital media to yeah. to to show their work. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So much creativity out there. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 it gives me a lot of hope. So, um, so uh, can you we we were talking about three tips that you could give for people that are wanting to start new projects or are wanting to sustain or keep creating, what 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 three tips would you give them? Yeah, well, I have to say I'm borrowing this tip from my own professor. Um, yeah. He always said, just start. Yes. And I think that just saying that has really helped me through life because yeah. you can really spend a lot of time thinking, shall I do this, shall I do that? Just start it and quite often, that idea that you start with is the is the is very powerful, and it drives you through to continue. So when I sit down to well stand up or whatever I do when I'm walking along, um, I just start it, and that that's it. Many people don't even start, and what we don't realise is how important it is just yes. to begin. Yes. So the next thing to do is to stick with it. Yes. <laughs> and yes. find ways of doing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think once you've started, you're you know you're eighty percent of the way there. Yes. Because yes. you'll find that your idea is powerful enough to drive you through. So yes. the next thing, stick with it, and be brave and courageous, and just you know to push ter to go into other territories. Yeah. Just be brave and you know borrowing again, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. So yeah. both of my mantras: start it, yeah, continue it, and be brave. Yes. Michael Harper is just saying, great to hear you both talking about your work, Nadine Shirley. Michael Thank you, is Michael. also saying, amen, just start is a good direction. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think, I think, you know, like um, as we start to close out, I do think, Shirley, you are somebody that I found to be so prolific. I mean, I've you're always a person that who says, I'm just gonna get on with it. You don't make any excuses. Like, I've never heard you make excuses about why something can't be done, you know, why it's impossible for you or and any barriers or or things that you've seen come up. You just stop and like <laughs> go another way instead. Right, yeah. uh, and I think that is really that is a true testament to, you know, how you as an artist have sustained and is able to keep creating because you're just showing and manifesting all the time that it does take this mind, as you said at the beginning, this mind of an athlete, this, you know, this mental agility and this physical focus to absolutely keep, and that perseverance to keep the work going. Thanks so much. And likewise, you, I mean, I've seen you <laughs> literally come off the stage with a broken ankle or strained ankle the night before and and coming to the concert hall the next morning, not even the next morning, as bright as a daisy. And I think, how do you do that? We just, it's, I mean, mental, it's, isn't it? it's our mental agility. It's that yeah. athleticism mm -hmm. in the brain, yeah. as well yeah. as in the body. And I really thank you for saying that because a lot of people don't, don't kind of click into that. Martin Stiles is saying, thank you. Very interesting and inspirational. Thank I enjoyed you. the insight into the creative process. Lena Christmas saying, inspirational. Anthea. Oh, I bless you. Truly, really two heroines. I'll oh, bless, bless you. Thank you. That's so nice. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. So, um, how can we find you, Shirley? Sure, many places. So, um, I have my own website. So, ShirleyThompsonMusic.com. Yeah. Um, my publisher has um, a lot of information on their site, and that's um, just music D E U W S dot com. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, those are the main places. I'm also with yeah. Sound of Music. They have um, um, a biography um, about me 
Mm. Um, my own, yeah, my own. I said my, my own website, YouTube, yeah, yeah, really. my own YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you Google, you'll you should find some information about me out there. Oh, brilliant. And oh, Michael Hubble was saying she was amazing on that day. It was great to work with her through that mental agility. Oh. And, uh, Susan is saying I really I really enjoying hearing about people's lives. Very interesting. Stay safe, both. And Alison Child is saying just start. Such good advice and keep going. Thank that, you. Yeah, that's my perfect. So before we leave, any final thoughts? Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, this, even though we've been going through difficulties with the, the pandemic, um, I've just seen so much hope um, there with human kindness. And I think that's what we have to continue with, you know, just be kind to one another. And I've seen so much of that. The examples I've seen have been extraordinary. I was just casually chatting to another artist, she's a composer, and she gets up every morning at 6.30 to taxi nurses to the hospital. And she does that twice a day, 6.30 and 4.30. Oh. I've just seen so much kindness. And she does her work in between that part of work. Yeah. And there, you know, there are people, I mean, look at Cap Captain Tom. I mean, he just brought me to tears. Yes. You know, I've just seen extraordinary acts and yeah. You know, we 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 really do live in a, a an incredible world. Humanity can be incredible. It's yeah. just you know the few that mess it up. But um, we yeah. really do live in a. And I love that. I I really enjoy the fact that you show that humanity in your work, and, oh, and it's you a true means a lot to me. You put in your work, and I just yeah, I think it's, you're so wonderful that you we have you in in the UK. I do. Thank I do you so that. much, and likewise. So wonderful. Anthea is uh, um, Anthea is just saying it sure was, as she's also saying, I'm going to start. <laughs> inspired someone to do Thanks, Shirley. Wonderfully interesting. And thanks, Nadine. And Michael Harper is asking about the uh, the publisher. Can you just say Duess? Is it D E U double S? That's right. Music. Duess Music. So, so, Holland. So, in The Hague. Yeah. So D. E U double S dot com. Oh, D E U double S. D E U double I've just put it in, so hopefully they'll they'll see it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, there we go. And Lena is saying blessings on you both, and thank you, thank you, Lena. So everybody, thank you so much. Tomorrow we're going to be joined by Gillian Ram. And a surprise because we haven't really talked about what we're going to talk about. So we'll, we'll find out tomorrow. And um, but she's a wonderful soprano, so it's going to be wonderful, 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 wonderful to, to wow. spend with her. And um, and Shelley, I, I just all I can say is it's been amazing. Thank you so much. Yes, to talk to you and to let getting into a world of your work and Thank the you. fact that you're a filmmaker, you're a producer, you're a dancer, you're a professor, yeah. you've got three doctorates, you're a composer, you're you're just this. <laughs> you you are a heroine, Shirley. You oh. are my heroine. So I am saying that I'm ordaining you that right now. Oh, you're why? One, like why? one of our musical heroines, and we're so glad to have had you this morning. And thank yes, you so nice. much for joining. Thank you so us. much. You're so awesome. Right Send the blessings to everybody. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for participating in your comments and everything else. It's really wonderful when you take part. And um, yes, take care. Blessings, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you so much.